Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona April Smith. So today hopefully we are going to have a lot of fun. I've certainly had fun with this cane over the past few weeks. Um, this one's called the Liberty Echo Cane and I'm going to show you lots of different variations on this one cane. When I posted on social media some of the experimentation I was doing, a couple of people mentioned that it looked like sort of Liberty print to them from the, the Liberty shop. And once that name got in my brain it sort of stuck there and I could see exactly what they meant but also the fact is with this one we do lots of different iterations of the same cane so lots of different different versions and there's also a lot of freedom um, hence with the name Liberty so that's why I've come up with Liberty Echoes because we are going to do the initial cane which is a square we're then going to change it into triangular cane and then we're going to have fun and we're going to do a twist where we do a double twist and get this pattern a twist where we do a triple twist and get this pattern and then when we put it together with a slight curl and we end up with this pattern. So lots of different ways of doing the same cane and coming up with different patterns. With this one in particular there really is no going wrong. Every decision you make, every way you put the cane together, you're going to come up with a different pattern and that's what I've been having such fun experimenting with. And I've had to limit myself to only give you five patterns because there are a lot more um, and you'll see at the end when I go through different colour options and what I've made with them. A couple of times I'll mention oh, I've twisted this one this way or I did this bit this way and you come out with a completely different pattern. So please don't stress over this one. Don't think it has to come out exactly like mine. Some of the times when people do things and they say oh it's gone wrong and I look at it and I think actually that's beautiful I prefer yours to mine so I say just experiment have fun and enjoy this one as you've just seen from the samples I've shown you I've used the same color combination all the way through this video so you can see how the patterns look as they get smaller and smaller and that will help you decide on your um, color choices and I'll come on to that a little bit later on as well I also spend a little bit of time in the middle just talking about slicing the cane purely because I've had quite a few questions again very recently asking me about um, slicing and a couple of people have said please can you put it in a video for us so as I say I've just added a couple of um, minutes talking about that as well because this one is quite complex and we have all the different designs I've done a little index for you in the video description below the video so under the video where you see a couple of lines it then says more click on the more and you can see there I'll put down all the minutes you need to go to for the different parts of the video if you wanted to skip ahead to one pattern or the other but they all start out with this square cane so that's the one we're going to start with and once you get to that point just as I say just experiment and have fun so let's start by looking at what we need to actually make the cane today. Because all we're doing for this project is making the cane, we have very little on the way of equipment lists. You will need a polymer clay blade, I sometimes refer to this as a tissue blade, and this is to cut down your thin slices of the um, cane once it's done. We'll use a roller, this is just a little polymer clay roller, any size will do. little craft knife. I use this cable needle, which is a 4mm one, just to roll any seams across the clay or to join any gaps but anything along these lines will work. To smooth down the clay and again to give us a nice finished veneer of clay I will use the stainless steel soap with a little bit of wax tracing or greaseproof paper, this one's a bit of wax paper, just to sit over the clay and then smooth down. If you haven't got this then just your roller, you can just use a roller over the top. And then just to measure and help us get the right size of our cane, I'm using a measuring sheet which I have laminated and this is freely downloadable from www.printablepaper.net. I use the four squares to an inch one, they also do it in centimetres so just download whichever you prefer. Other than this I'll be using biodegradable wet wipes or wet cloths just to clean my hands and work surfaces as I go along and just some um, plain tissues just to dry off anything that needs drying off and of course a pasta machine. I will use a pasta machine dedicated for polymer clay use to get the nice thin sheets of clay. If you don't have a pasta machine you can simply stack layers of playing cards on either side and roll in between them to get the various thicknesses of clay that you need. The polymer clay I'm using for today's session is Fimo Soft, but all well-known and recognised brands of polymer clay will work well for this technique. I am using six colours and I've got the same amount of each, so we've got three eighths of an ounce or ten grams and I've got aqua, peppermint and brilliant blue and they're going to make one Skinner blend. I've got rose quartz, lilac and raspberry and they're going to make another Skinner blend. And then we're going to cover each of these Skinner blends in some Windsor blue. 
and that makes in total a whole pack of the small packs of two ounces or 56 grams. So I'm going to condition all of these clays in their separate colours and put them through on setting number three on my pasta machine. And on my pasta machine, naught is thick and nine is thin and three is a medium setting. If anyone's unsure about conditioning clay, I do have a video with a few tips and techniques on how to get clay conditioned, and I'll put a link to that in the description below the video. So I will go and get all the colours conditioned, and I say these two conditions, they'll be used in a moment, we'll put those to one side, but do them in separate amounts, because we'll need that for that Skinner Blend, and that for that Skinner Blend. So that's all we need for today's project, just two Skinner Blends covered up, and then that's how we make the cane. So let's get started. We're going to take the aqua, the peppermint and the brilliant blue and they've all gone through on that setting number three on my pasta machine and we're going to do a Skinner blend. So to do that I'm going to cut diagonally through the two end pieces and straight down the middle piece. You then put them together and put them back in a rectangular format. For anyone who's not used to doing Skinner Blends, I do have a video tutorial on that with a few tips and techniques, and I'll put a link to that in the video description below. So I'm going to put them over, I'm just going to give them a little bit of a roll. And then simply pick them up, pinch down the middle, and I'm going to put them back through the pasta machine that way. But this time I'm going to put it through on setting number two, so one higher than we previously used because we've got four layers of clay now going through. Put that through, keep collecting it in your hand, fold bottom to top, bottom to top each time you put it through till we end up with a nice blend from this blue all the way through to the aqua. And I'll bring you back when I've got it to that stage. Once you have your blend, I'm just going to chop it into three equal pieces. Lay one on top of the other. I'm going to pinch that end so that it goes through the pasta machine more easily because we've got three layers now and I'm going to hold on to these ends to make sure they don't spread apart and put it through the pasta machine that way in on the same setting to get a longer thinner strip and now I want a really long thin strip so you can either put it straight down to your thinnest setting on your pasta machine which is what I will do setting number nine or if you know that your um, pasta machine actually shreds things if you try and put them through at the thinnest setting straight away simply go down one setting at a time but either way go down to your thinnest usable setting and get the longest thinnest strip you can get. Having got your clay I'm going to concertina this backwards and forwards into a piece that's about um, half an inch about one and a half centimeters wide and as you go try and make sure you don't trap any air in the folds. Once you've finished, like me, you'll probably have a slightly uneven um, log of clay. That's fine, don't worry about that. But what we do need to do is to neaten it to make it flat on either end. And we're going to use a couple of techniques for doing that. First one is simply just to push it flatter, which gets us started because we're not too wide right about the bit right on the end because eventually that will get cut off as we make the cane longer. But we're also going to use another technique. So we're going to just press it slightly longer and I'm just going to get another tile to show you what we're going to be doing next because what we're doing for this bit we then do for all the rest of the canes as we go further on. Now you don't need another tile but I'm just showing you it in this angle because obviously you can't see it when I'm doing it flat down on the tile. So if you look there you can see that this bit of the blue isn't down towards the bottom. So what I will do is effectively flat against the tile. I will pinch it in my fingers and pull it until it goes flat against the tile. Okay, so literally press down, turn it round and press down, turn it round and press down till you've got all those corners on that side nice and flat. So again there, the white the lighter bit isn't down, so press it in and push it down. But obviously it's easier to do that when it's flat on the tile. So every time I sort of say to you, press the corners down, that is effective what I'm doing. I'm putting just on the corner as I go. 
and if you want to get it to the right size we need for the next stage now which you might as well do then get this till it's about two and a half inches by about three quarters with one of the dark colours or with the dark blue facing upwards and then we're going to do exactly the same with the other blend and get it to this exact same size obviously if you're working in centimetres that would be about six centimetres by about two I'm now going to repeat exactly the same with the rose, the lilac and the raspberry again skin a blend so diagonally down the end pieces straight down the middle piece and repeat all the way through till we get exactly the same size block as this one. So I'll fast forward. Okay, so there we have our two pieces finished in exactly the same way. So we've got the blend with blue and the blend with pink. And we're going to reduce them down and cut off pieces in exactly the same way for both, but I'll just do the blue to start with. So the first thing we wanted was to get it to about two and a half inches, which we've already done. And having done that, we're going to chop off three quarters of an inch. Put that to one side. Now reduce this down till it's two and a quarter inches. What I will do is I will put in the equivalent in centimetres on the screen for those of you who are working in centimetres. It's too much for me to sit and work it out whilst I'm actually doing it because I've done the preparation in inches. But as I say, I will do it in centimetres for you on the screen. Always making sure you've got those ends nice and flat. So when you've got it to two and a quarter, again, chop off three quarters. And all we're doing is we're going down in slowly decreasing sizes till we end up with five pieces. This next one wants to go to two inches. Again, cut off three quarters of an inch. And this last one is going to go just between one and a quarter and one and a half because these last two are quite similar in size. So cut off three quarters and then this last one you can make it slightly smaller and the end tends to have gone a little bit distorted at this stage so if you want to, if it's not completely, well actually it's not too bad, I'll keep that one flat, but you could always just trim a little bit off. And so what you should have, as I say, are five decreasing sizes of your cane. So we're going to do exactly the same now for the pink one. And there are our pieces all nicely cut off. Now one of these we're going to put a point on the dark side and one we're going to put a point on the light side. So I think I'll do light on the blue, so I'll turn him over that way, and dark on the pink. So again put one to one side to start with and just work on one set at a time. So the first thing we're going to do is just create a point on this side and simply do that by pinching your fingers and pressing down at the same time doesn't matter if it folds over slightly at the top just so you end up with a point and now what we're going to do is we're going to press down on the side of it to elongate it out and what we want to end up with is a piece that's about one and a half inches or about four centimeters pinched at the top and quite a narrow triangle going down there so have a look on your measuring sheet and just finesse it so it's a nice triangle remember nice flat ends everything we do all the way through on today's tutorial we want nice flat ends as we go so we end up with something about like that and just carry on going through each time pressing into a point and then pressing it down and then spending time to get it to the right height for each one on the wall.
there are five finished pieces. As you can see, they're all the same height across this end, but obviously they get smaller as they go down the sizes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to repeat with our five pink pieces, but for these ones, we're going to pinch into a point the darker end, so this brighter pink at the top, and I'll bring you back when I've got those ones done as well. So there we are with all of our pieces made into their shapes, and now I've also got our dark blue clay, the one we're going to wrap the whole shapes in. Obviously in other ones I've done black, but the dark works nicely with these colour combinations. I've conditioned this in the two separate halves, so it's half a packet here, half here, and having conditioned it on setting number three, I've then gone down onto setting number five, so a thinner setting, and one half is going to be one, one colour and one half for the other colour. So just working one to start with, I'll put the pinks to one side, and what we're going to do is we are going to wrap all of our pieces in a layer of this colour. So I'm just going to neaten off one end to start with. I've never yet managed to get this the right size, that I can do all of them in one piece, so we'll put it through a couple of times if we need to. So put your piece up, use your blade to cut a slice the right width, and then simply cover in the slice and cut off where it overlaps, and then repeat that for all of the slices. Now I didn't cover the whole cane first and then reduce it because I want exactly the same amount of this dark colour in between all of the slices, and if we'd done it the other way then this colour would have reduced, at, reduced in size as we'd reduced our um, triangles down. So I'll carry on and get that done. And of course, as is typical, having said I've never yet managed to get that done in one sheet of clay, I then of course did it this time. But obviously if you haven't done it, then just put all your pieces back together. Put them back through setting five on the pasta machine and then bring it to another sheet until you've got all pieces um, covered. The remainder, roll up into a ball, making sure not to have trapped any air inside. And roll it just flat on your work surface, if you can, keeping it nice and, nice and straight. And I do that by keeping my hands firm and pulling out as I'm rolling along. Once you've got it close to about six inches, one, two, three, four, five, six, put it on your measuring sheet. Now this is between sort of quarter and a half inch, probably about a third of an inch in width. And with my thumb and finger created that triangle shape, I'm just going to press in just to create a triangle right along the top edge. And what happens is it presses down and moves along as you do this, and that's fine, because we actually want this to be seven and a half inches or five times the length of your pieces. So if you're doing centimetres and have done them at four centimetres, then this needs to be 20 centimetres. Having put the triangles in along that side, I will then pick it up and just turn it on its edge. And with the flat of my thumb, I'm going to press it thinner. So I'm pressing against this to make it longer and a more elongated triangle, so not a squat triangle, but quite a thin one. And again, as I press down, so it gets longer, and then I'm going to pick it up, turn over and repeat on the other edge. And I'm looking for something that's going to be about half an inch, so about one and a half centimetres, or one and a quarter centimetres rather, wide. Okay, when I've done that, I'm going to chop five pieces one and a half inches or four centimetres long, that's two, three, four, five. Put the excess to one side. And then we're going to start putting our cane together. So having the triangular point towards you, have the flat of the triangle and put it right up to that corner. And then repeat as you go down the sides. So we're making a, a flat line here. It doesn't matter that this edge comes in. That's what we want. But we're keeping it fairly flat at this side and the triangles are going opposite to each other, so point towards the inside, point towards the outside, and when you get to your last piece, the last triangle actually goes on the inside of the bottom piece. Okay, so that is one side of the cane. We're now going to repeat all of that 
with the pink ones and the blue to go around the pink until we've done exactly the same as this. Once you have your two pieces, put them so that the dark clay inserts are towards the middle and press them together to match up all those inserts. We now want to point the top of the triangle. So the easiest way to do this is to turn it on its side. I'm going to turn it up this way just so you can see, but I would do this normally flat down on the um, tile. Just press up gently to start with the corners. So whilst you've got it flat, just sort of go up the sides and as you get to the top, just gently bring it in. Go up the sides and just gently bring it in until you end up having folded over those pieces at the top. And what we're now going to do is we're going to reduce this in a triangular shape. Now when you put them together, there's usually a bit of a, a curve or an in curve in this side so it's not completely flat at the bottom. That's absolutely fine, that's one of the things we're looking for and we're going to reduce it sort of in that shape. So to reduce it to start with, so I'm just going to press in down the sides and then I'm going to press in but I'm only going to press in along these bits. I'm going to ignore the corners to start with apart from pulling it just slightly longer and just work your way down. So I'm mainly just working on the mid section at the moment. Then every so often you can pull these corners longer. And now we're going to turn it onto the tile and do exactly what we did before. So having got it flat on the tile, everywhere these corners aren't quite flat, we're going to pull those down till they meet at the corner and this way you will keep your cane neater. So do one side to start with, turn over and do the other side. So we are neatening off all of those corners and then just keep on repeating, pushing in at the middle whilst pulling it slightly longer, not doing too much on those actual top edges just pushing it in, pulling it wide and every three or four times or third or fourth time working on the top edges, turning over, pressing down, turning over, pressing down. We are going to get some distortion on the ends of the cane but for me that's absolutely fine because we're going to need some scrap clay to layer up our slices when we do our veneers at the end. So the distorted ends will be the bit of scrap clay we use. If you have any of the, the cane caps, the cane savers, and I'll put links to those in the details below the tutorial, in the description below, then they are brilliant for adding on the ends of the canes. Um, you can get them in triangular shapes and hopefully they're big enough to cover the cane that we're doing. And I will keep on doing this, I'm going to fast forward in a minute so you don't have to sit and listen and watch me doing it in normal time. But I'm going to do this till it's about seven and a half centimetres um, length because I'm working on the bases. I'll probably have about three quarters of an inch wastage on either end. But so I'm just pulling it through and every so often check because you don't, want, you don't want this one to go into an equilateral triangle. So if it starts getting too even, as mine is there because I'm not concentrating because I'm talking at the same time, I'm just going to push that back down. So you can see there I've really gone, put it back into that shape with the curve on the bottom and just keep pressing in mainly along the middle and then say at times just moving to the edges until it's the length that we need. We need about six inches of usable cane, so I've put mine with my distorted ends. You can see to me it's sort of distorted, certainly up to about here, up to about here. And then I will cut down through to see what we've got. So and that's absolutely fine, there's no distortion there whatsoever, that's just as the pattern should look. And then I'll do about the same on this end. And again that's absolutely fine, and you can always check 
by seeing whether both ends match up, which they more or less do. So that's absolutely perfect. And we're going, going to chop off two inches, two inches, two inches, or five centimeters, five centimeters, five centimeters, or just three equal parts, depending on what measurement you've used. Two of them we're going to put together straight away, and I've put it so that the ones with the darker side goes to each the middle. So for me, that's the blue on this one. And what I'm doing, I'm actually putting it together so that those black lines match up. It twists automatically at the other end, but that's fine. So twist it back the other end and do the same. Push and pull, because if you've got both ends matching up where the black lines are, the odds are that the cane in the middle will match up and be a good match. Okay, so I'm just going to pinch where the bits come together there and pinch where they come together there. And that is what we're looking for, where we've got that nice sort of curve on the bottom here, because eventually we're going to make this into a square shaped cane and we need to know where some of our corners are. So put those two pieces to one side just for a second, because with this last piece, we're going to reduce this down, make it much, much narrower, but keep it the same height and double this up so it'll be half the size and we're going to attach that onto this end here. So to start with, start reducing it exactly as we did, but bear in mind to say this height needs to be the same. Now we can always bring it up slightly when we're finished, but concentrate on that as you go. So I'm just going to reduce it to start with, but to keep the height the same, I'm pressing it in along the bottom here. And then pulling out the top. So same thing, just working your way pulling across the top and we want this twice the length of those pieces so for me that'll be four inches but at the same time as I say keeping that length if we can or the height across here When you start getting close, have a look for the height. So I actually need my height to be a bit, needs to be a bit taller. So I'm going to press down, effectively pulling this taller, both that side and the other, and press up to make the point longer. Let's see how we're doing. So we're about on the four inches height-wise, we're not far off. So when you've got it to where you roughly want to be, neaten off both ends, chop it in half, again put it together with the lighter bits together, so for me that was the blues, exactly the same as we did before, match up both ends, Pull it tight across the point and now you can match it up with the pinks on that side. Again concentrating on where those dark bits match. You see I'm pushing that end up so we've got a nice match across there. Turn it round and do the same on the underneath. And now we can have some fun and manipulate our cane. So now we've got our basic shape, we need to change this into a square cane. And we're going to do this by doing twists and turns. And we're going to start doing these twists and turns through every stage of the cane as we move and change it from one pattern to another to another. However, where you put your twists and turns is completely up to you. I'll do it a set way, which is the way I've been practicing, which is the way that gives you the patterns that I've been showing you on social media. But obviously, if you want to twist it in the other direction, you'll simply get a different pattern. And this is what I mean by don't stick necessarily to what I'm doing. Go and experiment. Don't feel you have to do it the same way. And if it goes slightly differently, don't feel you've done it wrong. You're just creating a whole unique pattern. So please don't stress over this. What we're going to do is we're going to force this into a square shape. So that is going to be one of my corners. This is going to be another corner, but I don't want it like that. I want it curved over. Now there's two ways of doing curves. You can do it using your finger and pulling the clay round. If you've got a roller, you can do it, use the roller to pull the clay around to give you a nice neat effect, however you want to do it. But what I'm doing is I'm actually pulling it, can you see I'm pulling this straight here, 
because this is going to be our corner but it's going to be a curl so I'm just pinching this round elongating it and once I've got it elongated I will just bend that round twist it in on itself try and do the same the whole way whole length along until it effectively is bending back on itself you can press it flatter because as I say that is another corner of our square so we've got one corner and this you can even pinch it slightly if you want to to make it easier is corner number two now this is going to be corner number three and corner number four is going to be down here but we want a lovely swirl on this piece as well and this is what gives us that little detail in the middle of the cane so that's the main part but this is the swirl so exactly the same way as we did before either with your roller pull it up or just with your fingers from about this corner you can pinch all of this piece up so all of this added extra piece we put on this is all going to go into a swirl the first thing I do is pinch it up. Don't worry if the um, outdoor, outside clay, the dark colour, starts to split anywhere. That's absolutely fine. It won't show up when you put all the slices together. So we're just going to elongate this. And exactly the same, just slightly twist over until you create a swirl. Now, as I say, if you'd done it the other direction, you would have had a completely different pattern and that is absolutely fine. So this one's going to flatten out halfway up and press him down, but hopefully you can see now we're starting to get that almost square pattern. And now that you've got that corner sharp, that corner sharp, you can make this corner sharp and you can force this one. Get your fingers in there and force that one sharp, which then gives you somewhere to press this one down on. And then we can start reducing in this square cane. So all I'm doing is I'm pressing in and elongating the sides where we had those corners pressed. You do get a lot of bulges so we can do exactly the same as we did before, the bulges on the bottom, is use and press down just on those corners to flatten off the edges. But because we did so much twisting and turning there will be a slight pressing out at the very ends and you can just reduce this down to whatever size you wish so I'm going to put it down till it's about an inch because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this one in half and I'm going to show you half the pattern exactly as it is and half one of the steps we're going to do to change the shape of it and to move on to the next stage. When you're close to the size you want to go to, on square cane there is a tendency for the corners to become rounded. So I will go down every corner and pinch it nice and sharp with my thumb and finger because this makes it easier when you are putting your pattern together. Having done all four corners, I will then go back and roll on each edge because obviously where I've pressed in there are slight finger indents. And now you've got a sharp corner, you can roll the inside bit flat but those corners will stay sharp. Go back and test it's the right height. Now again we've got distorted ends. So you can chop those ends off and they'll go in the scrap pay, clay pile but there you can start to see the pattern that we're going to get with this one which is a nice bold pattern with some lovely swirls in it so I'm going to chop this in half because as I say I'm going to use half to show you the square cane and then change half of it for something else so one two three four five so let's do about two and a half I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes talking about slicing canes because there's been quite a few questions recently and I've also been asked how to get really good slices. Sadly the main answer is practice, practice, practice. It's the old adage but it really does um, count. There are a couple of other things you can do. There are some very good slicing tools around where they actually have little machines you put your cane in and it gives you very accurate slices. So if you've got one of those absolutely fine. However if you've got a tissue blade and a cane first thing is make sure your tissue blade is clean 
Secondly, it helps with quite a few of the brands of clay um, that when you take a slices, it pulls down and cuts through. So leave your cane to rest if you can bear to. Um, certainly for 20 minutes, half an hour, if you can leave it longer, fantastic. I'm very bad, I've always been very impatient, so I've always just cut mine straight away. And I do find that the Fimo Soft pulls down slightly less than the other clay, so it distorts slightly less. That gives me a slight advantage when I'm using Fimo Soft. The other thing is the size you're um, cutting or the shape you're cutting makes a difference. Squares or rectangles are actually harder to cut than triangles because if you think about it, a triangle comes to a point at the top so you can see down both sides. So when you're chopping, you can always see where your blade is going. But other than that, find out what suits you. I've always cut from the back and I lean over the whole thing and will do it towards me. Other people like to cut from the front because they find they can get a better view like that. I've seen quite a few people cut from one side or the other. There's no right or wrong. Do what feels comfortable for you. When I do it, I sit right over the top of it. So I'm literally looking as I go, which is always very difficult when I'm on camera because obviously my head would normally be in the way. So I sort of try and do it sitting off to one side. So Choose a thickness that is comfortable for you. So don't start too thin when you're first starting off. Stay a little bit thicker if you want. I'm just leaning forward slightly here. I would do mine about there. It does help if you pull the blade tight. And you need to concentrate. Now I was only looking on one side. So I'm exceedingly lucky there that I have got a nice even slice because normally if I'm looking at one side it will go thinner um, but that for me is quite a good slice so I'm quite happy with that. The other thing you can do if you're not sure and when you're starting off is to put your blade in and to actually seesaw, so go down one side at a time, lift it up, go down the next side, lift up, go down. So each time I'm actually moving my body so I can see where the blade is going. And then when you get to the bottom, you should be virtually there and cut yourself a nice slice. So that's another way of doing it. Other than that, honestly, there really is no way around it other than just practice, practice. When I first started off, I would get a whole load of scrap clay. And this is another reason why having scrap clay is good. And if before I cut my cane, I would get into the practice of cutting it because the other thing that people talk about a lot which is very true is muscle memory you get very used to cutting a slice pulling back a bit cutting slowly back cutting pulling back and you get that practice by doing it again and again and again so if you've got your end bits cut them up it's also another reason as you know if you've seen my video on conditioning clay when I condition clay I cut it into very very thin slices before I condition it and again that's got me used to cutting thin slices over the years um, so I hope that helps a little bit um, for those of you who've got that question but sadly as I say the main thing is just practice Okay, so I've got some, I've cut all my slices. I've actually cut 20 because those were a lot thicker than I normally cut because I was showing you. So I've cut the ones I usually cut. So I've cut 20 of those and I've got a whole load of my um, leftover bits. So I'm going to put this through the pasta machine on a thinnish setting about number five or six so I get a sheet big enough so we can start laying our canes on top. So I've got my scrap clay and I'm going to put it down on the sheet. I'm going to roll it down to make sure I've got no air trapped underneath because there's nothing worse than having bubbles of air underneath your slices. And then, as I say, I will pull the slices off two at a time. And when you pull the two off, they automatically match together. So put two down. Put them on my sheet. Do the next two. And then with my blade blunt side of the blade, keeping my fingers well away from the sharp blade, sharp bit. I'm just going to neaten that off. The next two go on. They'll go together, but they'll go upside down. So turn them over and then match them first, because you always tend to match better on the top of what you're doing than on the bottom. Those will match up there. And repeat so you've got all your squares added.
I've actually stopped at that point because I ran out of the um, backing, that's fine. It's just showing you what we're doing. And then where you've got gaps with your cable needle, I'm just going to roll from one side to the other just to get those gaps joined up neatly and go along the whole piece, gently moving in from towards the middle until all the gaps are joined up. So when I was doing that, I wasn't using the point of the needle, I was using this bit where it starts to go wider. Um, so effectively you're like using the flat of the needle. Then we're just going to make it nice and neat. Put something like a sheet of the wax paper, tracing paper, um, even sort of um, the cling film or the plastic wrap can be better than nothing, although that tends to give you um, wrinkles. If you've got something like a, a stainless steel soap, small round movements, just to get the surface nice and flat. If you haven't, then use the, the side of your roller instead, in circular motions to start with. And then with a nice clean roller. If you were using the cling film or the plastic wrap, take it off before you roll it, because I say you'll get crinkles. You need to make sure your roller is nice and clean. Take the paper off. I will neaten up my edges. If, if you're using this to cut out or create shapes from, you don't need to do this. I'm only doing this because I'm about to show you at the end all the different patterns you can get. So I will just neaten up my edges just by pushing back in with that blunt end of the polymer blade. Again, keeping your fingers very well away from the sharp edges. So I'm just running the polymer clay blade underneath the clay, keep my hand out of the way. And there you have the veneer for the first pattern we've done. So that's the simple cane just in that first square pattern. So this is the other half of that square cane I had. And what we're going to do with this one is we're going to change it into a triangular shape. And that is very easy to do. We're going to hold this bit as being the point at the top and we're simply going to press it down flat, rocking it as we go, slowly flattening off that bottom end. Once it's nearly there, you can turn it on its side and use your fingers just to completely flatten out that bottom edge. Now, as you can see, of course, we have bulges and you know what we do with bulges. We're going to hold it flat and we're going to pull the other corners slightly longer to even out where those bulges are. You'll still get a little bit, but we will end up if you keep turning it round with a nice triangular cane. As before, I'm then going to move it onto my measuring sheet and I will get this back down to where each side is about an inch or 2.5 centimetres. And then I'll take slices of this one to show you what this one looks like in the triangular shape. Just to show you, that's some of the patterns we're going to get with this one. So I'll get this one sliced up, so I get it all on the back sheet for you. And when I put this one together, I put them together in sets of threes and to make hexagons to start with, and then we'll build up a pattern and I'll show you how to do that. So I've got my 24 slices from the triangular cane. I've mixed up a whole load of the scrap end parts of the cane, which has given us this nice colour blue. Put it down, make sure there's no air trapped underneath and then we'll start building up the triangular canes. So for these ones, it's quite easy to see how they match because each side is different. So put them together, either two or three, however many you get to work on. So I'm gonna work on three. And then put them down 
I'm going to put it down towards the middle and get another three and match them up and then we're just going to add extra bits all the way around the side till we get a nice finished piece on our scrap clay and then as before I'll neaten off any gaps with the cable needle, put some wax paper over and then use the stainless steel soap or the edge of my roller just to neaten it all off. So there we go, our first two patterns, one keeping it square and the second making it triangular. And that's just the start of the fun we're going to have. So these two are nice and straightforward and then we can just really go and experiment and push this, as I say, even further to get all those different echoes of the same cane that we're working on. So I'm going to go and get another three examples of this all the way down to where it was to the square shape and then we'll go from there. So, so far we've done the square and we've done the triangle. But what I've done here is I've made another big block, so started right from scratch, same colours, got it all the way through to the square stage. And now, just as a reminder, I'm going to press this down into a triangle and we'll see what happens when we start to add the extra twist in the different patterns we can do. So exactly the same as before, just press down, I'm going to flatten out this part, keep this bit as the point. So I've reduced it down, chopped away the distorted ends, so we've got our triangular point here and I've made it, it's more or less 4 inches, 10 centimetres in length um, and what we're going to do now is we are going to add a twist. Now we're going to add our twist by pulling up this blue point and each of the subsequent times I do this I'm always going to be pulling up the blue point. So all I'm going to do it's lying flat, but I'll do it up in the air to show you. As we did before, we are just pulling up the point. So exactly the same as we did when we were pulling out the other twists previously. And again, if it helps, use your roller either side and you need to decide which way you're going to do the twist. So I'm going to do the twist towards this side. So actually away from the twist we've got there. So I'm just going to pull it up. But it's quite nice and tall and extended. So you can see there we've pulled up quite a bit and then I'm going to pull it over but not wrap it completely round. Just pull it so it's created almost like a hook on the top and once you've done that you can cut it down into two pieces and you're going to turn one piece the other way up so that you can hook the two pieces in together. Let me take that away so you can see that more clearly. So they were like that. Put them on the side, turn one piece upside down and then hook so that those little hooks are actually going to go together. Sort of push them in. Twirl it round so that these two pieces are sort of opposite each other because we're going to push these back into a square format. So put the two together and then we're just going to close that down and push it back till it becomes virtually square. So I'm just turning at the moment and obviously we've still got gaps. But as you make it longer and turn, so those gaps start to close up. So I'm, I'm only actually touching when I go down the top points. I'm not pressing in on the rest at the moment just on those top bits and slowly, slowly as you press in so those gaps start to close up. 
and once you've got them closed so you've got more of a square you can actually go down and give yourself pinch out some nice points so at that point you really know where your sides are put it up on your measuring sheet and start pressing it down till it's about an inch or so across each side Then we'll just chop off the distortion at one end and see what we've got. And that's the swirl on this pattern. So what I'll do is I'll take off 16 slices of this one again, put it on the backing and show you what pattern that makes. So there we go, that's how it comes out with the double twist. So again, very different to the first two patterns, but you can start to see there's got that nice movement in it and flow from one area to another. So I've got here another whole section of the cane, so this is exactly what we've done and we've put it down to a triangular format. And this time we're going to take the curl and we're going to do three curls. So you can either do this whilst it's still all in one big piece and do the curl, or you can do it in three separate pieces. So this one I'll cut it into separate pieces. So I've made it so it's six inches or 15 centimetres in length and then chopped it into three equal parts. And we had to put the curl in, but this time we're going to put the curl in not against this pink side, but towards the point where our extra curly bit is. And again, as before, we're just going to pull this up and pull it round, same as we did with the two point one. And this time we're going to put three points together. So same thing, not against this pink side, towards the curl. Just do it, we're going to get a little hook round. Same with the last one, sort of on this side, towards the extra bit. And having got that hook on, you should be able to sort of put all three pieces in and we're going to just hook them in to start with, so they sort of meet at the moment in the middle. Turn them over, make sure it's doing the same on the other end. So hook those in. And what we're aiming for is that these three pink bits are going to be the corners. So just sort of shuffle them in, make them meet in slightly more in the middle. Same again, shuffle them in. And then you can very gently close the gaps all down this side. And now you've got the nice swell in the middle. So this obviously is a triangular cane, so we will reduce this down in a triangular format. And just as we did before, I will reduce this down so it's about an inch or um, two and a half centimetres across each side. And then I will take 24 slices and put them together and show you how this pattern works. So that's how it looks with the three-way twist. And you get that lovely continuous pattern sort of working its way backwards and forwards across the whole of the design. But I think you can probably see from this one, and I'll show you some other colour examples later on. Because in this one there's not such a lot of difference between the lights and the darks, it's not showing quite so clearly. So if you are planning on doing this one, then I would suggest rather than using the aqua and the rose, perhaps use white instead. And you could also go darker, so rather than the raspberry, perhaps go to purple. And just having colours with more tonal difference, so much more in the way of light and dark. So I've got exactly the same again, that same down to that triangle stage, done another combination. We are still going to pull this piece out, so we're still going to pull this blue end nice and wide. We can still give it a, a twirl over but this time we're going to curl it completely on itself so effectively just twist it round so there's going to be no interlinking in this one and having got that down you can then pinch the top to put it back to the nice equilateral triangle 
And what we're going to look for for this one is we're going to actually pull this in now into a right angled triangle. And because we've already gone slightly more square here, I'm going to make it right angle by pulling these two pieces wider. And when it's sitting on your measuring sheet with the right angle at the bottom, you simply try and make sure that this piece goes up straight. So what I'm going to do to do that is just pull back using my thumb behind sort of like as a wall or a measure to keep it upright. Turn it up in the other direction, exactly the same again. So chop down the middle, over fractionally. Put the two halves together and again we get a different different pattern, different variation. So I will make that one down into a complete square, chop off 16 slices and bring you back and show you what that one looks like when it's all put together. And that's how that one comes out. So you see rather having the little twist over the top rather than the interlocking curls, it still gives a really nice pattern. So if you've had any of the problems with the interlocking curls, doing it either twice or three times, then just do it as a, a complete curl over and do it like this instead. So let's have a look at all the patterns we've got. So here we have all five patterns that we've done today. So this was the initial cane and in a square. That was the initial cane just put into a triangle. Then we started doing the interlocking. So this one was just a double interlock, just the two of them. This one was the three interlocks to give that nice pattern. And this one we just did the curl. So if you find the interlocks difficult, just do the curl instead over the top. So that's all done in the same colour way. And for me, it's more successful when it's the larger patterns, less so when it's the smaller ones, just because of the colour combinations I've used for this particular one. However, of course, I have got some other colour options for you. So let's go and have a look at what we've got. So the first alternate colours went from bronze, gold and sunflower yellow being one Skinner blend, silver, mint and white being the other. And that gave us a cane like this and it was the silver and white bit that I made the main part with the gold on the background. And when you put it together, that's the main pattern with the square. This side is the two interlocking. So just the, the two bits that go like that. And this time, rather than um, twisting it towards this gold side, I actually twisted it towards the extra curl we got in. And that gives you this pattern. And if you wanted to do the three interlockings, that's how it comes out in that pattern. So the next one was ruby red, tangerine, lemon yellow, plum, brilliant blue and white. And for this one, I chose really to go on this particular side, which is going to be the background bit, quite light, but then also quite dark. And as you can see here, by putting the blue to the back, which is the cool colour, and doing the red and the yellow and, um, towards the front, you can really see how that continuous pattern shines out. And then I've also just done it as the, the two interlocking ones, so just the two together. And again, with this one, I bent it towards the curl as opposed to away from the curl, as I did in the tutorial. And the third option I did, we've got ruby red, raspberry and lilac emerald green, mint and aqua. And when you put those two together, you come up with a pattern like that. And I then use this to cover a bauble. And it's great the way the continuous pattern goes all the way around. So there are three colour alternatives for you. I should just add, covering a tablet or phone stand like this, I go into detail for in my triple blend cane in polymer clay and I've just taken the same phone stand and covered it in exactly the same way with the pattern we're using today. For the baubles and there's this one here and also one I've done here. Now this one is the our initial cane done as the square and then just pressed into the triangle and I've covered this one in the triangular cane. And I've shown these baubles in particular for those of you who have been kind enough to buy my decorated baubles in polymer clay tutorial on Etsy. And these are the ones I do the photos of at the bottom and mention the Liberty Echo Cane as coming up in November. And here it is. So I just thought you'd like to see them in video as opposed to just the still photos that I did in the tutorial. 
So that's it, that's the tutorial finished. As always, thank you so much for watching and a particular thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I hope you can deal with this one. It's just a case of having fun. Change it as much as you want. Every decision you make will change the outcome. Don't stress over it. Just enjoy it and experiment. Change your colours and just to say, have fun. So I'm off to make a few more colour combinations because I can't stop playing with this one. And hopefully I will see you next time. That's it for now. Bye.